viewpoints and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gamefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to Scarefest TV. We are in the countdown to Scarefest 2024. It's like days away now, days away. Yeah, we're, we're almost to the tears, almost to the tears. Adrian and Brandon are my, have joined us tonight for our monthly council episode. And I just want to throw out there that uh, Joe Lewis uh, reviewed Tarot. Arrow, I think it's on Hulu. I forgot. I don't know. I saw it somewhere. It's on, it's streaming. It's streaming. The movie Terror. So anyway, what are we talking about tonight, kids? Whatever everybody wants to talk about. I um. Can I make one? I I do I I do want to get one thing out there to the fans. Please stop asking for celebrities. Okay. Oh, I, I, said a, I said a month ago that if anybody asks for celebrities, they're getting Nobody banned. Believes you. Nobody believes you, though. I'm going to start banning people. This, I, but I don't even want them asking for next year yet. It's just confusing. It just muddies the water. Yeah, we'll do the official request post after the show this year, and then you all can tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, just go ahead. Okay, so it's everybody we had this year. Yeah. Half the people we had last year. Yeah. At least at and, least at least thirty percent. Yeah. yeah. And the entire cast of of uh, um shit. I had such a good line going and I forgot the sparkly vampire movies. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, Twilight. Uh, Twilight, that's it. So, so yeah. I have to point out that um Barbara has already commented. She said, uh, my hair is on point tonight and Wes can confirm this. Uh actually um, due to Chris's graphic for our show tonight, my hair looked way too good on that graphic, and I had to actually brush it right before the show started, which I normally never do because I don't want to set some sort of expectation to you all that I'm in any way put together or well-groomed um, when I'm not, but I had to tonight. So thanks, Chris Harris, for the extra work. Yeah, I'm just saying he made me look good. I didn't like that was the I, problem. I, I, I wasn't and, asleep on the couch. Yeah, or, you know, this all looked fantastic, and my just, eyes weren't crossing terrible. or anything. That's the skinniest I've been since like I was a zygo. Yeah, I'm saying so. You know, he says that I owe him an apology. I think he owes me an apology for making me have to be presentable tonight. Um, yeah, that's the trick. I don't, you know, I don't ever brush my hair, but I did tonight. Look, I still got my hair brush here somewhere. It's usually yeah. We witnessed her brushing her hair. Yeah, sure did. I almost can't reach the ends of it. It's so long, I have to, like, you know, it's crazy. Anyway, let's talk about Scarefest stuff. <laughs> well, what didn't we go over last week, though? That's the thing. Oh, oh, I do have one funny story to tell you. Oh, great. Okay, everybody's sweating over parking. Incidentally, yeah. we double-checked the parking garage. The ground has not been broken. That okay. part you're okay on. Um, we're, we're sweating bullets over the parking like we do every year. They come on the news tonight talking about the UK game. And apparently UK has also done something to jack up a bunch of their parking. So they're short parking spaces. And now, apparently, the way they reroute it, everybody, when they leave the game, they all try to leave it on the same side road. So they're complaining now. And I'm like, good Lord, Lexington, what else can you do about parking to mess this up? So if Adrian's going to wear something, I'm just going to wear something. Well, I no, got they, 
they said, um, I'm not wearing my halo and I don't have a halo. I only have the horns and you all better be really lucky that I broke these out because my dog has an unnatural fixation with flashy lights. And any moment now he is going to jump up and start freaking out and probably try to take these off my head. So we'll rock them as long as we can, but I don't have a halo. I've just got this and it's not as cool as Brandon's. So <laughs> I made, dude, I made this like. 10 years ago for cosplay but okay so parking yeah we all know it's going to be a mess but on the positive side like i went downtown a few times and just started scouting out like some of the spaces and they've added some private parking uh on the back of maxwell street so and, and actually a couple of places over off of uh, high street too so for you guys that are new, what's going to happen here at the like first week of October uh, is that I will post several times a map of all the parking spots and where they're at relative to the convention and the front door. I make a, I make a big old graphic. I point it out <laughs> Thursday where you can park at. Um, now, I did find an app, though, that and I can't remember the name of it. Um, somebody, um, Parktopia. Uh, yeah, that's it. So Parktopia does an excellent job of pulling up everything. Um, so now we've got quite a few parking structures downtown. I mean, we're not going to run out of parking, but you know we may be walking a, a, a few blocks. But Lexington's not that big of a city, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, and so. Good little stroll down the sidewalk. It's not going to hurt anybody. Uh, the walk. But yeah, follow the map. Uh, if the lot fills up, I mean, I personally, when I go to Comic Con, I don't even go to the lot. Um, I generally go off to uh, one of the parking structures uh, that's about a block away, and I map all that out and everything. Uh, now, of course, if you're staying at the Hyatt, then you got valet. If you're staying at the Hilton, they've got a structure. Now, that's that one thing I'll, I'll, I'll throw in there to help the fans out. If you stay at the Hyatt and you park in their parking structure, or the or the uh, um, Hilton, either one, when you check in, tell them you are parked in their parking structure. That's how you get the parking pass. If you just if you don't mention it, then you go to leave, you're going to have a big old bill. So yeah. I, that happened to someone I know last year. When we checked in, we said, we're parking, and they gave me a little car. But as hardcore as Wes is about chairs, I'm, I'm as hardcore about parking. So I spend an exponential amount of time mapping it out, putting it out there, making sure everybody can find it. Uh, luckily, Lexington's not that complicated of a city compared to, like, Cincinnati or Louisville. So pull up the map, save it on your phone. Download the Parktopia thing, and you should be good. But remember, the center parking, if you do park in the main lot across high, uh, they will not take cash. And someone did ask how often the shuttles would run uh, that were running out to the Clarion and the other hotel. Um, what's that amount to? About 40, 30, 40 minutes? So... Uh, it really is going to depend on the time of day and which hotel you're at. Um, I believe the way that they're going to schedule them is that each hotel has dedicated buses. They're not going to be running a loop. Um, hmm. I know. <laughs> I know we talked about it, but I think they're going to be, um, you know, so as quickly as they can get to the hotel and get back, from my understanding. So about there's, 30 there's gonna be one minutes. Time of, I mean, one time of day on... So, Friday between 4 and 6 is the busiest time for traffic on Newtown Pike. Mm -hmm. But it's still not, not too bad. Sure. But it, it, it does back up a little bit. So, you know, I don't know what to, we have. We'll have the shuttle schedule out. If you're, if you're there and you can get down earlier than that, it's going to help everybody out and help you out. Uh, so that's what I would do. The shuttles, uh, we will have the, the signs and everything posted out there with the times and 
stuff. But of course, like there's going to be some differences between, you know, the times and depending on, on traffic. Saturday, you know, it'll be busy through the afternoon. It'll lessen up in the evening, uh, late afternoon. And then Sunday, I, I really don't, I don't think it'll be, typically it's not bad on Sunday at all. It's going to be a little different on Sunday this year. Oh God, what's going on Sunday that I forgot about? We are going to, well, you didn't forget. We haven't talked about it yet because I just met with them today. It's one of the things we're going to talk about is the fact that Lexington loves Scarefest so much that they have decided oh. to piggyback off of our event on Sunday. And they are going to be having some events on Sunday night as well, starting at five o'clock. The Halloween Variety Show, which is going to be taking place at the Courthouse Plaza, and then the Halloween Parade, and then directly following the Halloween Parade will be the Thriller Parade. So we're going to have road closures in downtown Lexington <laughs> from approximately 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Enjoy um, so that, your stay. Yes, that will essentially affect from the um, Elm Street um uh down to broadway um the entire length of maine from it's like elm tree or something it's not actually like elm street that's further into northern lexington but it's like elm tree street or something um so it will matter if you it won't matter getting from the convention center to the hilton or the city center if you are leaving the con on sunday just go away from downtown and conveniently when you leave the parking lot it's a one way away from downtown so just don't turn around and come back and you should avoid the whole thing but if you're sticking around for any of our after hours events on sundays it will be a consideration and it will slow down the shuttle if you're taking the shuttle from the convention back to the hotel on Sunday after the show. Uh, it will uh, absolutely add to the, the wait times on that. So everybody just needs to keep that in mind. Uh, I did have a good question from the chat room. How, how uh, where are we doing VIP shuttles? Or, or are they only picking up one spot or are they making a loop? What, what are we doing VIP party shuttles? Those are going to, essentially what we're gonna do is starting on Saturday evening, we will have the shuttles that are running to the hotels and then, um, the, the other shuttles are going to be running to the VIP party, but we have to use the same area, uh, essentially. So uh, I think that you'll just, when you walk up to the shuttle, you'll have to ask, are you going to the VIP party or are you going to hotels? Sure. Perfect. Yeah, don't just get on a bus without asking someone where it's going, for God's sakes, please ask. But we will be running. Um, we will be running them. Hey, it's a good, we're, we're in between questions. Let's do our commercial break. Kathy Bonds is a 2024 Scarefest Weekend sponsoring vendor. The Bonds makes bath and body products for everyone. Ashley Dobbs makes unique small batch hand painted bath bombs, plus sugar scrubs, whip soaps, and body oils. Find the Bonds on Facebook and at the monthly Central Kentucky Mystical Market in Lexington. Scareface Weekend sponsoring vendors make the event happen. Be sure to tell them that you heard it here on Scareface TV. Wednesday's Crip features deals with talents in the horror community, from mask makers, sculptors, artists, and more. Plus, podcast live in the Crip. Shooting the shiz with BK and the swag and BK and the bees over buzz. Visit their website, join their Facebook group, and thank them for being a Scarefest sponsoring vendor. Welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Um, 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 okay, there, uh, I, I missed it in the chat room, but people. We want to know about line building. Uh, we'll go over quickly, because we're going to talk about this probably every other episode between now and Scarefest. Yeah. But, uh, wait, wait which, which part? The celebrity line building or the line, the general? They're, I, they're, they're asking about, I'm sure, about celebrity line building. Because, okay, first of all, I'll go ahead and cover Clive Bark. There's a hallway. Welcome to Thunderdome. That, that's, we're, we're, we're doing an experiment to see if you all yeah. really like standing in line all day like yeah like, everybody <laughs> wants everybody wants to complain about 
you no, know, there's actually not that many com people complaining about the line building system, but all of the people that don't get a spot in Matt's line, uh, we're going to be like, well, you could just go stand in a line for the rest of the day, and then we'll come get you when the con closes, and you'll be in the same position you are right now, not getting that autograph. See how that feels. But uh, no. So, yeah, that's – so, yeah, Thunderdome. Um, Matthew Lillard, let's go real quick. You, you explained it very well, oh. but I don't want to spend the whole show on this like we did last week. Well, actually, we're not – I don't think we should talk about it at all because okay. there's a second clip of me talking about it from last week that's posted in the group. If there's anybody in the chat right now that wants to view that, it's in the fan page. Um, and we can, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure that somebody would happily tag you in it, or you can go and scroll our fan page and keyword search Matthew Lillard, and I'm sure you'll find it. It was posted very recently. There you go. I I, I had seen it, and I forgot that that clip was put in there. Uh, yeah. Brandon. What do you want to tell them about getting in the building? Oh, uh, well, one thing I was going to back up to Clive real quick is that he actually moves. I went to Chicago and, and kind of timed his line a little bit. And I've timed Matt's and, and all of them. Clive does actually really well. Um, he, he's got pretty good timing down. Um, and it's 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 worth the, the little bit of weight. Um, now, as far as getting in the building... So, ticket booth is going to be in the same place that it was. Uh, you know, the line will, will for general admission is going to be out on Pine Street, just like it always is. Uh, this year, just kind of like we've done every other year, like we'll go out. Sorry, somebody wants to the back door. Um, so, like. <clears throat> VIPs and weekend pluses will definitely be lining up inside. Uh, general admissions, though, um, we're still kind of working out what that's going to look like. But uh, we'll be banding people in the line, uh, just like we do every year. So, like, when the best advice I can give you guys is like when you walk up, because the same thing happens to me. Like, when I go to a show and I see a big, huge line to get in, it's just like, uh, then I worry about how well they manage it. And, you know, here, what we do is, is like that line gets, gets big. Like when it, when the show opens, the line is big. But one thing that we started doing uh, a couple years ago to help it move uh, was go out and start banding people in line. So we took the ticket off as mobile. And so we'll go back, scan in, you know, like 500 or 600 people. And so when the door opens, it, it's not like, you know, the door opens at, at you know, 11 o'clock to GA. Uh, you're not waiting for 500 people to get their bands and then moving very slowly in through there. There's so, a big beginning. Right. So as soon as the doors open, the first, you know, six, seven, eight hundred, nine, whatever, we, we generally mark it off at a certain point and we'll ban them. And when that door opens, that line just starts going. And so I watch it all day on Saturdays. So I go out and I'll pick a person. I'll watch them, see how long it takes them to get from point A to point B. If it's anything more than like 40, 45 minutes, then we'll start banding again to, to get the line down. Now, last year, I mean, I only had a couple of people tell me that it went over 40 minutes. I was going to say, was... I asked in the group right after um, because we had someone who came to the show, drove by the building, saw the line, and turned around and drove back home. And they said, I wasn't going to stand in that line for two hours. So I went to the group and I asked everybody in the group to please post honestly when you got there and how long from the time you got in line to the time you got inside did it take. And the, the longest, and it's still in the group. Anybody can go and search this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 35 minutes on Saturday. Yeah, I take that, I take that very serious mm -hmm. because the worst thing you can do is spend two hours trying to get in the building. So yeah. we you watch know? it. <laughs> yeah, we watch it. We adjust our pace. If it gets behind where I think somebody's going to, where it's going to go beyond that, then we'll call up a couple extra staff and we'll start banding. Mm -hmm. But it will not be like at other shows. 
where the door is open and then it's, you know, molasses getting in. Uh, once the door's open, that line takes off like a rocket. Yep. And for and our new the people, same, like, the entrance is high street side. High street. high street side. Yeah, do not go in through Vine. You'll be redirected. And we'll have a lot of people. So one of the things that we changed up over the course of the last couple of years um, was having more of a presence outside so we, we could direct people on, on where to go. And we had like people that had already been banded or people that, that got a VIP pass, like just see the line and get in there and not read, you know, the announcements and stuff. And so there's staff that are constantly working the line and we're looking to identify people that have photo ops. We're looking to see if, uh, if there's somebody that's not in the right spot, if you're already banded, we walk that line just like the green mile. And if we, we, we are constantly calling out photo ops and, and everything. So it's just as important to manage the outside as it is to manage the inside. So I promise you, we spend an inordinate amount of time doing that. So don't get discouraged if you drive in and you see a line that's wrapped around the building three times. You will not be waiting that long, I promise. Now we uh I will we mentioned it last week. I want to reiterate the uh the black carpet event that so many of you have gotten used to enjoying will only be streamed this year. We're moving it to a different area of the building to make it more convenient for the celebrities. That will not be conducive to a crowd, so it's limited to our um our uh, our media and but we will in some way, shape or form have that streaming to the Facebook group and probably YouTube. So you'll be able to um to watch it if that is of interest to you. Of course, VIPs, you can go ahead and get in the building, get in line, and as the celebrities come in, you can be waiting on them. Mm -hmm. I'm going for two years straight that I don't look like I just rolled out of bed and walked in. We'll see. La last year was the first time. Before that, looked like I wore moo moos and... Yeah, it was, it was pretty rough. I've got I've gotten to where uh, I enjoy it now as opposed to like feeling like uh, I don't know, people don't know who I am like walking in off the street. That's okay. Rob Zombie's been kicked out of his own concerts for them thinking he's homeless before. All right, so th that's the gist of the line. Like we'll we'll be doing early check-ins uh, for folks. We're still working on on what that's going to look like exactly. You know, we, we get to center at a certain time. Um, they set up the ticket booths. We get everything in. You know, I've already ordered, like, the lanyards and the badges and everything. I added quite a few on to each one just in case. Because uh, a badge always goes missing, it seems like. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be posting a lot about where to go, when to go. The doors are clearly marked. Uh, so whenever we do early check-ins, you guys can come in, get your stuff. Uh, VIPs, weekend pluses. Please, God, remember that once you check in, or even if you show up on Saturday and the line is huge, do not stand in the line. Circumvent the line and go straight to the door that says VIP weekend plus entry. And then when you walk in, you're going to have your own separate line that will walk up to the lovely Karen, and she will take care of you and get you checked in, get all your stuff. And you do not have to stand in the line outside. Please, God, do not do that. Okay, uh, Jake Godbold in the chat room. Um, we may or may not update the names of the stream if we, when we stream the panels, because you can look at your, if you're watching it in real time, you should have a panel schedule available to you on the website. Now, for the recordings of them, yes, we will go back and rename them. We plan on having better cameras this year to actually make archives worth watching. So um, just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, I will not guarantee the, uh, the panel names will be uh, updated in real time because that actually takes human interaction 
with the computer that we may or may not have the manpower uh, to do. And yes, Kim Ford Johnson, Brandon, is in fact wearing the helmet from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. No, that's from Ghostbusters. Oh my God. Yeah. That's yeah right. I'm glad you caught yourself on that one. I was about to get Honey, I Shrunk the Kids down. What are you actually? pointing at? You can point Dangerous. all day. Dangerous. Dangerous. The, the only cosplay that I ever do is just a series of Rick Moranis characters because I feel like I'm fat Rick Moranis and that's the only thing I feel comfortable with. So, yeah, I have all kinds of Rick Moranis stuff except Lord Helmet from Spaceballs. And, by the way, if anyone knows where I can find that, uh, please let me know. I will gladly purchase it. Vendors and staff use the re-entry doors. Yeah, someone asked about vendors. Your vendor badge will let you use the re-entry doors, and you will have that badge ahead of time when you set your booth up. Otherwise, there's no point in even having the vendor badge if you're not going to set your booth up. Yes, if the show is open. So VIP and weekend pluses are early, general admission. Like those times are the same as last year. If you already have a badge and you show up and the con is open, you go in through re-entry. Okay, uh, last question before we go to our break and announcements. Uh, Barbara, the black carpet, anything we stream to Facebook and or YouTube is recorded. They do it for us. We don't even have to record it. When I do, when this show right now stays on Facebook forever, unless I do a copyright violation, then they have taken down that. But, but other than that, 100%. All right. We're going to have a little break and then we'll be back with more. Happy birthday, Adam. Are you a fan of horror movies, books, comics, music, and collectibles? Room Org Magazine is for you. Subscribe today to receive 6 or 12 print issues annually and join me, Executive Editor Andrea Subisati, on an ongoing journey through the horror genre of the past, present, and future. Plus, get access to unmissable special editions such as A Century of Witches, 50 Years of Gore Cinema, British Horror Movies, and so much more. Room Org the world's premier horror and culture and entertainment magazine since 1997. Accept no substitute. All right, we want to welcome back Wicked Beard to our Scare Fest as Master of Costumes. Our Master of Costumes, Wicked Beard, is, of course, coming back to Scare Fest. 2024. In addition to Scarefest, welcome D Mac. Special music. He's our DJ this year. Uh, D Mac is our uh, official VIP party, and he's, he's our DJ. So uh, we've gone a different direction there. Terrence Muncie, he's one of our artists that we want to spotlight because he'll be doing the trading cards. He will probably be on an episode of Scarefest TV before the before we get to here. Uh, to tell you all about the trading cards. Joel Robinson, the official artist of Scarefest. He does our poster graphics and um, um, stuff. So artist and, and, and web, a lot of our, uh, our banners for the website and stuff. So he is the official artist of Scarefest Weekend. The blacksmith of horror himself, Mark Phillips of Nightmares Unlimited, will be at uh, Scarefest on the floor at the Nightmares Unlimited booth. And we want to welcome back our founder, Patty Starr. Ghost hunter extraordinaire, Patty Starr, will be. She is coming to the Scarefest yet again. Hey, I want to give a special thanks to one of our food vendors. These people help us uh, get through the weekend with our volunteers and such. Red State Barbecue, and while you're in Lexington and you've got time, run out on uh, uh, Georgetown Road. What is that address? That is 420 Georgetown Road, Lexington. They're right on, like, the county line. But uh, So, yeah, check them out. Uh, Red State Barbecue. And Donut Days. Donut Days, we want to uh, thank them again. They, uh, they uh, will be helping with the feeding of the staff. 
They're on 185 Southland Drive, 185 Southland Drive in Lexington. And according to this, they have an Eastern Bypass, 330 Eastern Bypass. If you're in the Richmond, Kentucky area, check out Donut Days and thank them for being one of our sponsors. And Just Graze, Just Graze. Now, they, um, their uh, Facebook page says they make graze boxes and charcuterie boards for any occasion. So they're going to be doing us something in the, along those lines for our volunteers. And if you're in the Paris, they're in Paris, right? Yes, Main Street, Paris. If you happen to be in their establishment, thank them for being a Scarefest vendor. Sponsor. <laughs> and Spellbound, though, when we're talking about vendors, I, I looked up too soon. Spellbound is one of our uh, vendors, our featured vendors. We want to thank them. Look them up in booth 134. The Bloodlust and Bourbon Podcast. The blood, and they're coming back again this year. They've been, this is like their third or fourth year. They are uh, Bloodlust and Bourbon. Glad to have them back. The Game King. The Game King. Double booth, 111 and 112. Just want to say thank you for being a featured vendor. And uh, everybody, as the show gets, as once we update the floor plan, be sure to map out these vendors so that you know to walk up and thank them for helping with the show and yes. enjoying their stuff. They, they make a lot of this stuff possible. I want to give a shout out Gussied Up Magic. Their premiere episode is now open to the public. Go to scarefestradio.com, follow the link. You can watch the premiere episode of the Gussied Up Magic podcast on scarefestradio.com. And if you'd like to support me in my, my endeavors, patreon.com slash scarefestradio. I got a few benefits for my members. I've been a little quiet on the blogging front last couple of weeks. I've been busy. But patreon.com slash scarefestradio. Hey, you can join for a dollar a month. One of those things I talk about on there is how I'm not training. I will be training. I'm starting. I, I'm going to try to start Monday. I was going to start last Monday. Things went sideways. But my next 5K, yes, my next 5K is September 28th. Now, this is going to be a big weekend. That is sponsored. My sponsor for that one is Mama Ruby's. And Mama Ruby's is behind the Full Fool Moon Sisters Bazaar in Bowling Green, Kentucky, at the Corvette Museum, September 28th and 29th. Now, me and Joanna will be there. I'll be doing really bad tarot card readings. We'll be handing out Scarefest information, trying to get some of the locals riled up. But also that weekend, the Central Kentucky Mystical Market. If you're in the Lexington area and you don't want to drive to Bowling Green, hey, Clarion Hotel, Central Kentucky Mystical Market, go to the website, scarefestweekend.com, click the link, and you can see a full calendar of what's going on with the Central Kentucky Mystical Market. And finally, my save the date reminder, February 15th, the Caribbean Carnival. Save the date. It'll be fun. Back to the council. Well, real quick, like for you uh, Phantasm fans out there, Mark made my first ever Phantasm Sphere. I still got it. And he does amazing work. He, uh, he also, I used the picture because um, he did the uh, quad barrel shotgun for when Joe Bob, uh, when he was on Joe Bob. And so I'm hoping he, he's, he's supposed to bring it down with him. So that was pretty awesome. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. So let's talk about some other stuff that is going to be going on because a lot of the folks that are still here and they're, they stay after the guest announcements are the people that pay really close attention in the group. And you all can help spread the good word about things that are happening at the show. And now that all the posers are gone, we can really get down to brass tacks. Um, so let's talk about um, some of the things that we talked about with the city of Lexington today. And since I haven't had a chance to meet with Brandon or Wes, this is going to be news to them too. Um, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, thanks to technology. Now, if you want to be involved in the parade this year, either as a cosplayer or as a zombie in the thriller parade, you can sign up to do that. 
We're going to get the registration. We're going to link it to our page. And then after Scarefest is over, if you have any life left in you, if you're not partied out yet, if you still got some drive and you're still in the spirit, you can go and be part of the parade. They are enthusiastic and really happy to have some of us with them. Um, that is going to be on Sunday evening. Let's talk about Saturday afternoon in the middle of the day. They have decided that it would be a really great idea to get all of their zombies that are going to be in the thriller parade together for a rehearsal on a street. And the street they've decided to do this on is the one right outside of our building. That's right. They're going to be in Triangle Park and they're going to be shuffling around to the thriller dance as zombies in Triangle Park on Saturday afternoon from one to three. So you can go out and you can, we're gonna have food trucks outside. There's a huge long hallway of glass windows where you will be able to see all of the zombies and the shenanigans that are going on outside. So if you get bored and you wanna go and zombie watch, there's a perfect opportunity Saturday afternoon from one to three o'clock, um, you can go and check that out. Um, some other things that uh, are going to be going on, I saw that Rob is in the chat. So, uh, Rob, if you can, because I don't have it in front of me, and apparently my brain's not the steel trap it used to be. Rob is going to be doing some classes this year, um, and these are going to be free. They're not going to be ticketed. We wanted last year to try to help cover some of the rental costs of the room. We have decided this year that since there's so much going on, we're not going to do that. If you want to you know, come and enjoy one of the classes with Rob, he is a phenomenal teacher. The classes are engaging. Those are going to be Friday is introduction to cosplay prosthetics and Saturday intermediate cosplay prosthetics. You do not have to take the beginner class uh, to do the intermediate class. If you've already got experience and you don't need the beginner stuff, just come and join him on Saturday. I'll get the uh, the times if someone posts those Two in the chat. What is that? Two on Friday? In intermediate. No, no, on, on Saturday. I was going to say, wait. on Saturday. Perfect. Two o'clock on Saturday. That's going right. to be down Listen. there in uh, meeting room nine. That's going to be our classroom. And then Sunday, he's going to be doing a kid's day class. Um, so even the little ones can come and he is going to have kits together that are very kid friendly. Um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the kids really enjoyed those last year. So uh, definitely make sure to check out those. We may be throwing in a few other classes. Um, if we can round up some folks to put those on for us. Um, also, there's going to be contests going on throughout the weekend. Of course, we've got the cosplay contest, um, the costume contest on Saturday that's got a huge prize, $500 first place on that. Um, we've got the, the kids' contests on Sunday will be um, costume contests. I think there's going to be an evil laugh contest instead of the scream contest. Thank goodness, because my... I lost some hearing uh, last year from that. So we're going to go with evil laugh this year instead of scream. Um, so all, all sorts of really cool little things going on um, that are free to enjoy, you know, over the weekend. Of course, we're going to have the, the trading cards. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about these because most of the folks that are in here already know about the trading cards. But if you don't, I just saw that Terrence did a, a live in the group earlier probably to talk about the trading cards. <laughs> so these are going to be hidden all over the place. If you collect the full set, um, you get a special card. It's super neat. Um, we're going to have a small station set up this year where you can meet up with other people and trade cards. It's like, oh, I have two pumpkin heads, but I'm missing a ghost face, you know, like. Um, so that'll be in the seating area, which is another thing I'm going to talk about. We are going to have a seating area this year on the floor. When you walk into the front doors and you see the glory laid in front of you, that is Scarefest weekend. Um, there's going to be the tattoo row for Scarefest Inc. Uh, there's going to be some star cars. We're going to have Christine there. We're going to have the Jeepers Creepers truck. And, you know, you all are always asking me about spoilers. Let me give you a little spoiler. We are working diligently to make one of Brandon's dreams come true and bring in the Cuda from Phantasm 2. Is that right, Brandon? The car, you're, you're muted. 
sorry, all my family came home, and so I didn't mute it. Nobody would hear what you said. Oh. Uh, yes, I I actually got to see it in Chicago, and it is a thing of beauty. It is from Phantasm Two. Oh my God, I still dream about it. Awesome. So we're working on getting that on the floor as well. So really cool lineup of star cars that we're working on. And just beyond that, there's going to be a, a Levy food station. Now they're going to have things like chips, cookies, um, sandwiches, salads. It's a grab and go. It's not hot food. It's just a grab and go station. I think it's actually self-service. So you go, you pick what you want, you scan it, and you, you pay at the kiosk. Um, and then... The, the glory that is the seating area. Um, there's going to be a rather large seating area there with tables for sitting down and just relaxing. There's going to be the Lexington Gaming Association will have a large library of mostly horror themed board games. And if you have any interest in playing these games or learning, uh, they'll be doing some playthroughs on those. So you can check out a board game um, while you hang out. We're going to do some bracelet trading over there. There's going to be a spot where you can trade the, the cards. Um, lots of chairs. Lots of chairs. I know Wes is really, really excited about that. No, because so. you put them on the opposite goddamn end of the building than That's where right. I'll be. Absolutely. I see yes. no benefit whatsoever to this. Yes. <laughs> well, you're, you're running freaking marathon. Uh huh. Yep, that's right. You're you're running five Ks now, and the next thing you know, you'll be and doing a triathlon. They're, they're immensely easier than that little quarter mile trip between my booth and the downstairs that I make three thousand times that weekend. Well, hope yeah, Just that's think. true. So you know, maybe you're going to have to fight Adam for his rascal. And I'm already seeing people asking in the chat about the photo op potential of the uh, the Phantasm guys with the car. Yes, that's absolutely in the works. We're waiting on a couple of things from Celeb Photo Ops to shake out logistically. Um, you know, we've got this uh, Goliath task that we have given them that is the photo ops at our show. We do a ton of photo ops for our size. And uh, one of the things we're waiting on is logistically to figure out when they can take a their show on the road and come upstairs and take these photos because we're going to be offering uh, Jeepers Creepers photo op. We're going to be offering the CUDA photo ops. And then we're going to be offering a David Naughton uh, werewolf photo op also on the floor. So every time they have to move around, it, it's a big deal because they've got lights and cameras and action and cables and they need internet and all of these things. So as we get that worked out with them, um, we will be posting it. It may be a, a bit closer to the show um, before we get that out there, but it is in the works right now. Uh, Baby from Supernatural is not going to be there. Um, and then someone asked about Fright Bites. Fright Bites actually is not writing any bites anymore unfortunately they have moved on to other things um but we are looking for someone uh you know to maybe do a cookie decorating class with us this year so if anybody has any leads on that uh, the one person that i did reach out to is actually going on maternity leave in october she had the audacity to have a baby right when we need her to come and do a cookie decorating class but you know can't win them all so if anybody has any leads on that, we would love to offer cookie decorating again. Um, Rob says, what's the schedule for Clive? I'm teaching some and the line will be long. And if he leaves without saying hello to me, I will die. Well, luckily he is there all three days. And so are you. The schedule for him, from what I understand, is that he um, does not do panels. He'll be doing his photo ops and he'll be signing at his table. So he should be at the table signing for a, a decently large amount of time. Um, and I do know that he does not do personalizations and quotes. I believe Brandon not, if that's right, I believe he, he does not do right. So he'll just be doing signings and he doesn't offer selfies at the table. So the autograph portion will probably go by pretty quickly. So I think that, uh, I think that you'll be able to, um, to get in and see him, you know, realistically, I think you'll be fine. Um, I know the cookies yeah. are fantastic. They're great. 
What was yeah, that? Yeah, I, I actually, I, well, I sit there and I, I watched him and like, so you, you do have to wear a mask when you go into the room. Um, and he doesn't personalize, but you get a really good interaction. And he he is not at all what I expect. Like, like I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you, when I got to meet him. And a super, super nice guy and really takes time with his fans. So it, yeah, it, it's a, it's a good experience. Awesome. And he does move, like I said, pretty quickly. Now he will, if you sign his artwork or if you buy an art piece from him, then he will sign it. Um, but he still won't, like, he's not able to personalize all those because they're just too many people. Yeah, exactly. So we want as many people as possible to have the opportunity to be able to meet him, um, you know, even if that means not getting a quote or personalization on the item that you're having signed. So just keep that in mind. Um, someone was asking about, oh, Sydney. Hi, Sydney. Will the photo ops with the vehicles have different backdrops or will it be the same as the other? <sighs> They're not going to lug a step and repeat up to the floor. So the special photo ops will probably, I would say, mostly be centered on the vehicle and the occupant, or if it's like the Jeepers truck, I think they take them standing right outside, but the truck will be the background. Um, for the David Naughton, um, werewolf op that is going to be on a fully built um scene set so it will have the the background is like i think like brick and it's got like the sign um in the background and stuff so they'll have they will frame they'll frame it up as well as they can you know being that they're not in a photo booth but they're not going to have uh backdrops um okay, <laughs> Rob's, they, they, oh, yeah, go ahead. they do close they, they do close in like pretty tight and like I got, uh, I've had, I've done a couple of photo ops like that, and I was very happy with the with the outcome. Do we need a commercial break? Is that yes, why we need to do our okay. break. Uh, get boned weekly, and during this, everybody, I will be writing down any good questions I see in the chat rooms. And yes, Adam, I can see all of the chat rooms. Retreat Studios is a Scare Past Weekend sponsoring vendor. Trick or Treat Studios is the one-stop shop for high-quality Halloween and horror. Shop masks, costumes, figures, collectibles, games, and more from your favorite movies. Find Trick or Treat Studios online at trickortreatstudios.com. Joel of Robinson Heart is a Scarefest Weekend sponsoring vendor. Joel Robinson has been the official Scarefest Weekend artist since its beginning in 2008. Joel is a movie cover artist and a Universal Monsters artist. Visit Joel for posters, canvases, t-shirts, purses, and backpacks. Visit Joel's Etsy page at joelrobinsonart.com. Scarefest fans, it's almost time for Scarefest, and I'm getting excited. Jeez, you should feel my nipples. This is Joe Lewis, and I'm here to talk to you this week about a movie that's on Netflix that came out earlier this year that a friend of mine, James, described as this. You ever heard a sentence? You just heard a sentence, and you can't unhear it? Well, that's what James, Dr. Jerkface, did to me when he was telling me about this movie, and I said, well, I'm going to watch it. I kind of got a little bored. I'm going to go back. He said, dude, it's basically horror Jumanji. And he's not, his kids liked it. They were in my house. Of course, they also eat all my smoked chicken and smoked hot dogs. But that's beside the point. We're talking about tarot that came out this year that's currently on Netflix. Is it any good? Basically, this is the quick plot. When a group of friends carelessly get 
caught up or do something stupid. And they violate the sacred rule of tarot readings with this deck, this hand-drawn deck that they found. Because one friend, she's the star, can read tarot. They unleash an unspeakable evil. With the cursed cards. And one by one, they will go down. This is an average movie at best. The screenplay's nothing to write about. Home about. The lead, Harriet Slater, who plays Haley's fine. Jacob Batalon, who uh, plays Paxton, is in all the Spider-Man films. He's uh, Spider-Man's, uh, Tom Holland's partner. He's fun as always. This is an average movie at best. Five out of, four or five out of ten stars will kill it. So I'm going to try to find the positives because there's a lot of horrible dialogue about, you mean that can't happen? Uh, and another trope that happens in these movies that drives me crazy because there are some decent decent kills. It just drives me nuts is when you see ah, the things about the smash and it hits the person and we cut away to the butt, blood splatters on the wall or the cell phone or the person and we don't actually see it. And I know they're trying to get away with stuff, but I'm tired of it. I've just seen so many. Tarot doesn't have any really major stars in it, not against any of these actors, but it is pretty. It's well shot, and I actually liked a lot of the creature designs once you finally get to see some of the monsters and the creatures. I like that a lot. Some of it's kind of spooky. Now, is it scary? Absolutely not. There's nothing scary about this movie. There's nothing really all that interesting in this movie. I'm actually plucking at things to say positive about it. Pretty. I like the design of it. And the monsters look good. I wish, actually, in this one, I wish they'd shown more of the monsters. They look so good. No, Most of the time, the rubber better in the shadows. But in this one, looked pretty good. I was really impressed. Should you go out and see tarot? In college, I knew a lady who read tarot cards. I don't believe in any of that. I don't get scared of any of it because I don't believe in any of it. So should you go see it? If you're into tarot, sure. They get as about as much out of this PG-13 rating as they can. There is a little bit of blood. There are some killings. But should you go see it? If you got Netflix, you want a horror film, have a couple of drinks, sit down, watch it, that's fine. Should you go out of your way to see it? No, it's a four or five star out of ten star movie. It's all it is. I cannot stress just how average the movie is. Check out Tarot on Netflix. It's okay. It's not the worst thing I've seen on here by a long shot. However, will I ever watch this movie again? No. I have no intentions of ever watching this movie again. It's kind of like the Tooth Fairy that came out 15 years ago. Great creature. Didn't see it enough. First 10 minutes are okay. Never went back to see it again. Pretty much this. This has been Joe Lewis, Bonehead Weekly. Tarot cards are coming to kill you. Even Wes's bad tarot reading. Oh my God, do you imagine what he would do with those cards? He would level Manhattan with his bad tarot reading. Ooh. And welcome back, everybody. We had found a little bit to talk about during the break there. Uh, first, okay, the media passes. Um, on Generally, once you get your media pass, it's a general admission. So I want to ask if, uh, now I will tell you, though, on Friday, get there early because that's the only way we can get you to the black carpet event with your media pass. Yeah. So, yeah, but once you have it, yeah. And they will, on Friday, they will be directing you at where you pick up the pass, where you need to go. Uh, Adrian, do we have projections on when Saturday and or weekend plus tickets? How, how much of a deadline are these people under that are apparently not? I think we can, we can pass is sold out. Oh, is it already sold out? Let me go look, but I'm pretty sure they're sold I out. I had not seen it announced. Okay, well. I didn't announce that I I said, you know, four times that they were right. going to sell out soon, but I don't think I actually announced when they did sell out. Let me see if I can look while we're on here. But while I'm looking at this, nobody that I've seen in this chat is guilty of this. So my rage is not with you, but because you're here, you're going to hear it and spread the word. I know my mods are, I know you're doing a great job. If one more person sends me a direct message to vote for them on Face of Horror. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to be the next Face we, of Horror with what I do to them. Stop. Uh, don't do it. Guys, we're, we're all going to, like, don't make us have a PSA here. Mm -hmm. like, Everybody don't. knows, and most of y'all feel the same way about this contest. We're not, we're not sharing the posts. We're not putting them in the group. We're not putting them in the chat. We're not asking people to go vote for us. We're not doing it. We're not. We're not doing it. So that's 
a hard no. Let's see. And they um, send yep. it to you in private message. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I had somebody send me um uh like six messages today, and they were like, "Hey, can I post this in the group?" Um, sorry to bother you. Can I post this in the group? Hey, I'm sorry to bother. Can I post? And then they just sent it to me. Um, no, you you can't actually. I got one message about it before it even started. Somebody said, I'm going to be doing this. That's all they said. And, <laughs> right. And um, I've not, they've not been spamming their timeline with it anyway. Weekend passes are sold out. Okay. They're sold out. You cannot get weekend passes anymore. You cannot upgrade your tickets to a weekend pass anymore. Like Brandon said, we put the badge order in. Um, we, we cannot add more of those. They're, they're sold out, sold out. There are no more weekend admissions to the show, uh, in any capacity, unless you, um, purchase one second hand, which at that point it is buyer beware. I will say this with the new ticketing system, because of the option to sign up for the purchase protection, they allow refunds. If you bought the purchase protection, if someone gets their ticket refunded it goes back in the it goes back in the inventory so if sometime between now and the show someone gets their ticket refunded it will show back up i'm not advocating for people to load our ticket page and check 87 times a day but if there is a situation where someone cannot attend and they refund their ticket if they want to share that and let people know it's going back in the inventory they're welcome to do that um and i don't want to hear anybody like in three weeks if someone says i bought a weekend pass yesterday get mad about it so that's how that can happen and it might so just a heads up on on that um we are halfway sold out with the greg nicotero dinner with the celebrity ghost hunt um we sold quite a few tickets to the uh podcasts i don't foresee those selling out because they're in a huge room uh but it's possible, you know, so if you if you want to get those, um, then definitely be sure, you know, to, to do that. Um, I don't think that we're going to have any additional announcements for ticketed events. There is one thing that I would give about a 10% chance of happening. We will have a better idea next Monday if that is going to happen, um, then we will start talking about it. We'll start doing some teasers for it. Um, until then, I'm not going to say a single word because it's a very low chance that it comes to fruition. And Brandon's not going to say anything either. I'm not saying a word. No, nope, because I'll be wearing his face for the next council episode. And then I will win for the, you know, the face of horror. Um, my, my face but, yeah. That's a, Absolutely. a harsh. Uh, yep, I will wear your face happily. You have a nice face. I'll wear it. Um, okay, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? There's so much stuff going on at this show. Guys, you know, we could we could be on we could do an extended episode for four hours and not cover everything that's going to be happening at the show. And even if we did, about five minutes after we talk about something, someone will show up in the chat and ask three questions about it. So for our sanity and your sanity, hearing us repeat the same things over and over, we're not going to to do that. Um, but you know, we are here. We are working very diligently the next couple of weeks. Um, Wes is wrapping up film festival things. He's processing media applications. Brandon is going to give himself a new ulcer over graphics and signage at the convention center. I will be booking airfare and travel, um, hotel stays, those sort of things. So we got a lot of, you know, nitty gritty work we got to do over the next couple of weeks, but we will be here. Um, if you have questions, of course, we're going to be watching the group as much as possible. Um, not going to have a ton of new announcements, but we will have new details releasing about things we've already talked about. We're going to be getting out our schedules. The panel schedule is done. It just needs a bow on it. We'll get that posted. And then uh, the next monstrosity of a task will be getting the full event schedule. Um, and adding to that as we go. Um, so I've already got like a rough layout of that to send to Brandon. Um, he, he'll put the, the final pretty touches on it and then we'll get it posted to the site. But um, one thing I do want to plug is we've just got a couple more days until we do our um, 
pre-order online only exclusive uh, shirt of our, our retro, our zombie shirt from yesteryear. Um, so that'll go live, I think, in two days. I did talk to our merch company today, and they're down with Con Crud uh, from Dragon Con. <laughs> so um, it, I don't ex expect a delay on it, but that will be coming out in a couple days. Those are only available for two weeks, online only. Two weeks. Uh, you cannot get them at the show. Only uh, during this window can you order those. And we'll probably do one every year. We'll pick an old shirt and redo it. So maybe next time we'll vote on which shirt we uh, we bring back. I think Camp Scarefest will probably win. Um, but do you guys have anything else? Brandon, Wes, you got anything else you want to talk about? No. Because I'll be talking about it every gosh day and Friday for the next yeah. month and a half. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of the questions still, like, I mean, we'll get hashed out in the schedule. I mean, there'll be a just a flurry of information because, like, obviously when we get, like, 30 days out, just because of travel, and if a lot of people don't understand this, like, travel and putting all this together, a lot of it happens at the last minute. And so scheduling and all that stuff, that's how it works. Uh, I do want to remind people, because I've read it in the in the fan page, because we still have a lot of people that have never been to a show before. Mm -hmm. Remember, I, I think we, we may just do a, I may jump on and do a live one night and just talk about etiquette and things that I do when I go to a show, just to kind of maybe help, help give yeah. everybody an idea, like, if if you've never been before or if you just you're just starting to get into it like make sure you get line buddies when you get in there yeah line buddies are the best part of it if you're my line buddy best place to be in, in line at the show is with me because chances are if you're behind me i'll buy your autograph with the exception of clive i will not do that for clive but uh, Fair. but if you see if you if you see me stand in line you can jump in behind me. Chances are you may get an autograph. But find your line, buddy. If you got to go to the bathroom, if you got to go to a photo op, um, they're, they're your lifeline. Uh, and people at HorrorCon will, this is what I love about them, is that we take care of our own. So if people won't, won't mess with you. You say, I got to go to the bathroom. You don't know the guy. You just met him five seconds ago in the line behind you. He will hold your spot. Now, I've been proven wrong, but it's been very, very seldom. I can count on one hand. Mm -hmm. I've I've never met a jerk uh, in the in the in, as my line buddy. Um, That's true. Yeah, uh, there's going to be so we'll still have you know the ATMs on the on the floor. Yeah. So anybody out there, if you're buying anything from the center, like the food court or anything like that, uh, that is all card only. Yep. Celebrities are all cash. Vendors will more likely take a card, but please remember that cash is keen. And yep. those guys, you'll probably be paying more for stuff if you're paying with the card. That's just, that's the way it goes. And I went to a show not too long ago, and the reason this is why I'm bringing it up, because there was so much stuff that I wanted to do, and I'm a huge nerd, but every ATM in the hotel went out. And the only thing that you could get was like three blocks away. And so there is, it just sucks. I hate when that happens. And so we've got, we've got two in the center outside in the hallways. One is massive, but you guys leaked it dry last year by early Saturday. Yeah. So they're going to come and refill it early Saturday. The fees on it are not very bad. Uh, there's one on the lower level that's hidden and may as well be in a disguise. Yeah. Um, I had to walk several people down to it last year. Um, other than that, we'll, we'll have at least two, maybe three on the floor this year. And we had to refill those quite a few times. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll make sure... That's I'm going to be zero. opening up a loan sharking service at Scarefest this year. I'm going to call it the Jaws service. That way, you know, you got to make sure you give me interest. You're going to be sleeping with the fishes. 
and I know everybody's kind of like, like I know this is a big conversation piece because, like, as far as I know, we're one of the only horror shows that that book as many guests as we do, and this is our second year. We've always had, you know, between like sixty and seventy-five. Uh, ever since I've been here, uh, the last couple of years we've kind of went beyond that just to accommodate. And I've talked about this before on 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 TV. Uh, I like big fan reunions or cast reunions. I love them. Yeah. And I think that other people do too. And so, it, you know, when we get down to the nitty gritty, like we bring in, you know, what, 96, 97 guests this year. There's over 100. Over 100, I mean. And so there's a couple of things with that. So everybody budget out. Not everyone will be charging the same amounts. Uh, photo ops are, the, are always a, a good way to go. Um, but having that many folks, you know, plan accordingly, it does allow you to not have to stand in line all day because the, the crowd kind of disperses around. And so if you walk up to like somebody and they've got a, they've got a line, if you run over and maybe Nick Castle's line is going to be a little bit shorter, you know, you can get Nick Castle and by the time you're done with Nick, chances are, you know, Don Coscarelli's line will be down. Yeah. And so people just jump back and forth out there um, all day long. And so I, I just, yeah, I mean, I, I just really like kind of plan that out, watch the floor. Uh, we'll do the stuff with, uh, look, Adrian is a, the, the best person I know out of every show that I've ever been to about managing lines. So we will take good care of you. And I'm one thing, threat of death or dismemberment yes yeah it it does sometimes you have to you have to be uh you can't rule you can't direct many people with a gentle hand just no. the way it works gotta keep that pin pan strong but one thing and, and one other thing i will tell you like if you guys have questions you know depend on the fan group i've said it yeah. before and i'll say it again you guys are the best fan group for an event that i've ever seen ever any place yep that's very and if you true go in, and if you go into other shows it, it turns into like a hateful um you know the 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 promoters may not even answer half the time mm -mm. and the worst thing you can do is like you know we're 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 getting into the zone now where you know we could we could have cancellations we could have things switch up yep uh, anything can happen in the last 30 days you know all bets are off out of our control uh, but we will always communicate with you. Yes. And and that's the biggest thing that a show can do for folks. It's very frustrating when people don't know what's going on. Uh, so that's that's my promise to, to you guys. We and believe I in transparency. Yes, and I cannot thank you guys enough for what you do in the fan group and what you do at the show of just taking care of each other and the <laughs> vendors and everybody. Um uh, I mean, I've, I've told this story before where somebody at, like absolutely like left $6,000 worth of autographs in a bag on the floor. And she, somebody grabbed them, turned them in, didn't skip a beat. You don't see that everywhere. And so I'll take the Pepsi challenge with my staff any day of the year. I'll take the Pepsi challenge with the people that come to the show every year. You guys do. I, I I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Somebody get Brandon a tissue. He's he's gonna be he's he's gonna be more gushy the closer we get to Scarefest. I'm gonna get meaner. Brandon's gonna get sweeter, and West is gonna have to just keep us all in line. I'm just pretty much who I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, he, I'll, consistency. So, so Sunday night, I'll yeah, I'll, you'll you'll see me. It's like catharsis. <laughs> I am the rock on which Scarefest is built. That's right. There's nothing changes. Everybody, this has been Scarefest TV. Like I said, we'll do a couple of FAQ episodes between now and the event. And we still have one more council episode left to go. So there's plenty of time to find out everything you need to know about the Scarefest. We hope to see you there.